Hello, and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video, we are continuing to look at Cold Snap, and we're going to look at the white-blue deck, which is uh, Kjeldoran Cunning. I'm going, to pre I'm going to presume that's how you pronounce it, Kjeldoran. Um, yeah, but let's, let's get in, let's start looking at it. Uh, so we have 17 creatures, 13 instants, 4 enchantments, 2 sorceries, and 24 land. Mana curve off to the side there. So, uh, what's the theme of the deck? I suppose it's kind of soldier tribal, because, um, I mean, you've got effects that care about soldiers. So we'll say that. it's We'll say it's white, blue, weenie, soldier tribal, and then we just kind of like blue, like soft control options. Uh, so let's talk about the rares of the deck first, because that's honestly what gives the deck a lot of its identity. Um, so one of the rares is Darien, King of Hjeldor. <laughs> now I'm making it Hjeldor. Okay, I, I'm just going to pronounce it differently every time I say it, and we'll just deal with it. Um, so four colors and two white for a 3-3. Three, three. Um, whenever you're dealt damage, you put that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens into play. It's um super good ability. <laughs> super, super good ability. And incredibly abusable with, like, Soul Warden, because um, that I think that was, like, the casual combat at the time, was like, oh, I take damage, I make five soldiers, I've got Soul Warden out, I gain five life because five creatures come into play. Fine, I'm abs I'm doing fine. So yeah, I think Darien is like a super good, super good creature. Um, like really, really good rare, I think, to include in this. Yeah. And as I say, it's a it's a legendary creature. Always fun to have a legendary creature as one of the rares in these pre-constructed decks, because it would have been exciting to a new player. I'm not sure if a new I'm not sure if like new players would have been the ideal target for these cold snap decks, honestly, just because they contain these old, weird Ice Age and Alliances cards, which are a bit like wordier and a bit more complicated than kind of where design was, you know, at the time of like because Darien's a new card. Um so yeah, not really sure who the target for um the cold snap decks was, but anyway. Darien, pretty good card. Good rare, good rare to include. Um, so the other rare is Field Marshal. Uh so one colours and two white for a two two gives all your other soldiers plus one plus one and first strike. So <laughs> It is, unfortunately, it's like, we're still at this phase where, like, these Lord effects are, like, symmetrical, so it does benefit everyone's soldiers, like, not just your own. Um, we're so close to the point now of this tipping over to be only affecting your stuff, like, we're so close to that stage of, like, design. Um, but I suppose the thing about Cold Snap is they were, they were trying to do, like, um, homages to how Ice Age and Alliance's cards were designed, so, like, I suppose... In co in Ice Age and Alliances, if there'd been like a Lord effect for soldiers, it would have been worded like this. It would have affected everything, um, because like Goblin King and and all those other cards sort of did, you know, like um, Master of Atlantis as well affected all Merfolk that kind of thing. So, but I mean, like it's a perfectly fine card, and I so say you're going to be producing more soldiers than your opponent because you've got Darien King of Hjeldor. Um, then we have four Surging Sentinels, so three mana for a 2-1 with First Strike, which is okay, I think. Um, but it has Ripple 4, so Ripple is uh, one of the one of the other keywords of Cold Snap. Cold Snap introduced a lot, honestly, because we've got Ripple, we've got Recover, we've got Snow Mana, we've got Snow Creatures. Um, did a lot, you know, for such a small set, it really packed in a lot of, like, weird little mechanics. Uh, so Ripple is um, when you when you play the spell, you reveal the top four cards of your library because it has Ripple four. You can play any reveal cards that have the same name of this spell without paying the mana costs, and then the rest go on the bottom of your library. So I mean, the ideal thing here is you do Surging Sentinels, you Ripple four, you find another Surging Sentinels, you play that, that then ripples four. So you the idea is that you kind of ripple throughout the deck. And um, yeah, not many Ripple cards. I think maybe there's probably like one each color, I think, at most. Um, but then there's also the artifact um, Thrumming Stone, which gives all your spells Ripple 4, which um, comboed amazingly well with Relentless Rats because then you would just play your whole deck and it was it was the thing. Um, but yeah, I think so even if you Ripple it and you don't get anything from it, I think just a 2-1 with First Strike is like fine. It's fine for three, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, three, Keldoran Outrider. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two, just one white to give itself plus 0, plus 1 to turn 10. It's fine. It's like it's basically a bear with upside, isn't it? It's it's fine. It's fine. A little boring, but fine. And he's riding a giant dog. Come on. Like we, come on. It's fine. Uh, we have a single Jotun Grunt. So two mana for a 4-4. Four, four. has cumulative upkeep. Um, so cumulative upkeep is so basically every turn it gets a age counter and um, 
every upkeep you have to pay its cumulative upkeep cost for every age counter it's got on it. So the first first turn you have this, uh, you have to put two cards. Uh, so was it? What is the cumulative upkeep? Firstly, put two cards in a single graveyard on the bottom of the owner's library. So then next thing you have to do four cards, and then next turn six cards. Um, so obviously very efficiently costed, like four four for two. But um, again, like I don't know. It, I think it would have been difficult to keep meeting this cost. Um, but I think if you get it for like just at least one turn, it'd be okay. Um, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, Jotun Owlkeeper, I think, is a bit better. So three mana for a three three has Cumulus Keep one white or one or blue, um, and when Jotun Owlkeeper dies, you get a bird creature token, which every for every age counter it had on it. So this I think is okay. Um, you because know, you can spend turns putting mana into it, keeping it around. And then when you've kind of like had enough of paying the cost, you can just let it die, and then you get a bunch of tokens as a payoff. So I think this is this is one of the best ways um cumulative upkeep is done in cold snap. Like it's the best kind of spin I think they put on it. Um a single Keldoran gargoyle, uh six mana for a three three, um flying first strike and lifelink, which is, you know, perfectly fine combination of keywords to be putting on a on a three three flyer. Uh yeah, I think it's okay. Um six mana is obviously a little pricey, but I say you're getting a lot of a lot of keywords on that. Just um just a really kind of you know, just something to play in, play late game and it sort of does okay, I suppose. It's all right. And then we get into the Alliance and Ice Age reprints. So we have Keldoran Home Guard, four mana for a 1-6. Um, whenever it attacks or blocks, you put a naught, uh, minus naught minus one counter on it, end of combat. And then when you do, you put a naught white deserter creature token into play. So I kind of like this as a design. It's, I mean... I can't I can't decide if it's a uh, it's a downside or not. So obviously you're gonna be blocking with this because it's only one six. <clears throat> so whenever it blocks, yeah, it gets weaker, but then you make another creature token, which you can use then to chump block. So I think you would actually get quite a lot of mileage out of this, you know? Um because essentially when it blocks, it then makes another creature to block with. And then again, it blocks again, it goes down to the yeah, end naught four, but you've got another creature to block with. So I think this is okay. Actually, in retrospect, I think it's, I think it's all right, and uh, I think there's a few ways in the in the deck of um, like just doing a board wide buff. I might be imagining that, but um, yeah, if you've made a lot of these deserter tokens, then sure, you've got you know you can buff them up. I guess yeah, it's fine. Uh, two Keldoran Elite Guard, oh, such such a goofy art with his giant wing helmet. I love it. Uh, so four mana for a two two. Uh, tap target creature gets plus two plus two slender turn. Uh, but if that creature leaves play, then you also have to sacrifice uh, Keldoran Elite Guard, and you can only play this ability during combat. So, kind of a few hoops to jump through, and there is a drawback. Plus two, plus two is obviously like a fairly decent buff to be giving, um, especially, you know, there's no mana cost tied to it. Um, so it's okay, I think it bounces out being a sizable a sizable buff, but I say you've got those those drawbacks, but it's it's fine, it's fine. Um, and then two Zuran Spellcaster. This is just um, Prodigal Sorcerer with a different name. Um, you know, two cards, one blue, one one. Taps do one damage. Fine, fine. We've gone, we've gone back. All these videos I've spent like, yes, finally, this the ping ability has gone over to red cards. And then here comes Cold Snap. You're like, haha, no. It goes back to blue. And just like, oh, okay, then fine, fine. Blue can have it again. It's a retro set. It's fine. Um, and then a bunch more reprints, honestly. A lot of this deck is reprints. Actually, a lot of these Cold Snap decks, they are, I'd say it's about 50-50 of reprints, honestly. Um, a single Disenchant, we know Disenchant. It's fine. Um, Keldoran Pride, one card's one white for an aura. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus two. And you can pay two cards and one blue to attach Keldoran Pride to another creature. So you can shift it around, which is, I think, kind of okay, I suppose. Yeah, fine. Um, a single Reinforcements. Um... So one white mana, instant, put up to three tight creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library, so you stack your next three turns, essentially, of, of creatures. It does get three back, which for one, one white mana is, is pretty good, I think, especially at instant speed. Um, it's just you are then locking yourselves into, um, into those. Well, it doesn't have to be three, it could only just be the one. Um, but yeah, I, th I think reinforcements is all right. I think that's perfectly okay. Um, 
a single Scars of the Veteran. Uh, so five mana instant. You can exile a white card from your hand rather than pay its mana cost. Uh, you prevent the next seven damage that will be dealt to target creature or player this turn. And for every one damage to a creature burn this way, it gets a plus naught plus one counter. So this is okay, I think. Um, preventing seven damage is, I mean, that's a lot. You know, especially if that's coming directly to you. Um, exiling a white card to prevent seven damage, I think, is okay. Um, yeah, I think mean, I guess it's okay. And you know, if you do it, use it on a creature, you intentionally make that creature like really, you know, really tanky. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's okay. I think it's fine. Um, and then some really tasty reprints actually. So um, swords to plowshares. Um, so this would be the first time Swords of Plowshares got reprinted in, like, a new frame. Um, yeah, Swords of Plowshares is obviously, like, a super, super good... Um, it's It's been reprinted, obviously, a million times since, but I think this is the first time it was then in a in a new frame. Uh, so, yeah, one white mana to exile a creature, and its control against life equal to power. Super good. Super good Swords of Plowshares. Um, classic white removal spell. Um, and, I, again, it's like... Um, uh, so before I've talked about cards like black cards where you have to like pay life to draw cards I always think that's like a skill testing thing a bit of a milestone in player knowledge and skill like sometimes it's worth paying life to draw cards source of plowshares I think is the same um, like a lot of new players might see this and be like I don't want my opponent to gain life but like you very quickly realize it's it's almost certainly worth giving an opponent like four or five life if it means um, exiling a creature for only like one white mana so good, good kind of like little skill test, uh, knowledge, knowledge checks kind of card, I think. Uh, three Brainstorm, which is really good because <laughs> brain, brain, Brainstorm is, well, Brainstorm is a good card and also having three of them is also super good. Um, so yeah, it's just draw three and then you put two from hand back on top of the library. So this is actually a way of setting up Ripple with the Surging Sentinels. Um, I suppose if you had them in your hand, you could then just quickly pop pop one back on top and then you ripple into it and yeah fine um the fact it just draws three at instant speed is really really good yeah really like brainstorm and it's, it's crazy there's three of them in this deck uh two latinam's legacy uh one card's one blue uh instant you shuffle a card from your hand into your library and then you draw two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep um so it's this kind of awkward wording of like drawing cards you know you have to wait until the next upkeep it's kind of awkward but um yeah, it's okay, I think, to shuffle a card in and draw two, I suppose. It's fine, sure. Uh, and then two portents, uh, one blue mana sorcery. Look at the top three cards of Tiger Player's Library, put them back in any order, and then they can shuffle, and then you draw a card at the beginning of the next, next turn's upkeep. So, you know, it's a good way of doing this on your own deck. If you don't like what's coming up, you can just shuffle. Um, or, you know, it's likewise, do it on your opponent, look at the top three, and if you don't like what they've got coming up, make them shuffle. Yeah, and it's fine for one blue mana. I think that's a good effect. Uh, single Binding Grasp, four mana. Um, this is kind of like mind control, but, like, you've just got to pay extra to keep it around. Uh, you control the enchanted creature. You have to pay two mana to keep it around. Um, it also gives the enchanted creature extra an extra point of toughness, which is fine, I suppose. Sure. Uh, four Surging Aether, this is the blue ripple spell. Four mana, ripple four, return a permanent to owner's hand. Um, yep, yeah, so, I mean, it doesn't say non-land, so you can you could potentially get rid of the land and uh, ripple into another Surging Aether and do it again to be really mean. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's fine. The thing is, like, it's four mana. Um, it's so, this I don't think this is costed as well as the Surging Sentinels. Because returning a permanent to owner's hand for four is quite expensive, even if you do, even if you can hit a land. Um, this is really well cost if you ripple into another one. Then obviously it's super good, but it's a little expensive, I think, if you don't ripple into another one. That's just that's just what I think. But you know, it's a bounce spell, it's fine. Uh two wings of Aesir, one white, one blue for an aura. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one flying first strike. Yep turns any creature into like a I think a pretty decent combat threat, honestly. Um yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, perfectly good card. Perfectly straightforward aura, yeah. Uh, and then two Boreal Shelf. Um, it's a non-basic Snowland, gives you white or blue, comes into play tapped. Yep, yeah, perfectly fine, perfectly fine. So what could have been? Um, 
I know in these Cold Snap ones I've gone about like, oh, there's too many reprints, but like there was a reprint here that was staring us right in the face. We could have had Counterspell. We could have had a reprint of Counterspell in this deck. Um, even just one, I think, would have been great. Um, Wind Spirit is just a flying creature. Sure, could have had that as a bit of extra evasion. Prismatic Ward is um, it's not quite protection. It just prevents all damage from a color of choice. It's an aura. Um, Vanish into Memory is this weird uh, blink spell. Uh, you remove a creature from the game, you draw cards equal to its power, and then it comes back into play, and then you discard cards equal to its toughness, which is kind of weird. Um, and then I thought you have Keldor and Warcry. Um, so two mana, creature control, get plus X, plus X, land turn, where X is one plus number of number of uh, cards named Keldor and Warcry in all graveyards. You're kind of going wide with soldiers. So I'm actually surprised this wasn't in here like as a way to buff up all the soldiers you might be generating um yeah just seems a bit bit of a weird exclusion i say this actually would have gone well with the deserters i thought there was i thought this was already in the deck but i'd forgotten it's it's one i suggested rather than one that was actually in the deck but this would yeah this would have gone perfectly wide you're yeah so you're going wide with quite a lot of soldiers and tokens and whatnot um but yeah so overall it's a white blue deck actually I don't, I like is a strong word. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty solid. Um, like uh, the two rares in this deck, I think are really good. Uh, Darian and the Field Marshal. Um, I think the, some of the reprints are really good, like the uh, Swords to Plowshares and the Brainstorms. Unfortunately, you know they wouldn't be legal in I think modern, which would have been like I think Cold Snap is legal in modern, but obviously the Alliances and Ice Age reprints aren't, which makes these decks kind of weird, I suppose. Um, so yeah, like overall, I think this one's pretty solid. Um, yeah, I think it's, de I mean, definitely better than the last one we looked at. Um, because this one seems to have like a very, like a plan that would work as in, you know, just, I say soldiers and kind of like the control options with blue. Um, there is this kind of sub theme as well, like, um, messing around with like the, you know, the order of your library, which obviously then you can, which is obviously meant to interact with ripple. Um, so yeah, I think it's okay overall. Yeah, it's all right. But what are your thoughts of this deck after seeing the deck list? Uh, did you have this deck? Uh, do you have any thoughts or opinions on it? Please put a comment below. I always like to read people's comments. Um, but I'll be back next time. I'm going to look at the last Cult Snap pre-constructed deck. But until then, thank you for watching and listening, and have a great day.